Doctors of Reddit, what is the most unethical thing you have done, or you have heard of a fellow doctor doing involving a patient? I once knew an ob who didn't like to work, after about 5pm, so at the end of office hours, if they had someone in labor they would swing by labor and delivery and find a reason to do a c-section on them. Sometimes they blamed the baby's heart rate tracing, justified or not, but the classic one would be that they would check the patient's cervix and lie about how dilated it was, so it seemed as if labor wasn't progressing rapidly enough, and say I just don't think this is going to work, cut her, and be home for dinner. Now in of we love class, three letter acronyms, and one of the real indications for caesarean is CPD, cephalopelvic disproportion, which is where the baby's head is too big for the pelvis. But for this particular doc we always said that they cut patients for CPD, caesarean prior to dinner. I work in a pharmacy and a doctor was just recently blacklisted from our pharmacy because he was prescribing his attractive female patients high doses of opioids to get them addicted. Then he would only refill their script if they had sex with him. Apparently he was doing it for years before anyone said anything. Since being blacklisted he has also been arrested and charged with 13 felonies. Not unethical exactly, but frowned upon by the hospital, if they found out. When I was a junior doctor, I had an elderly patient on our specialist cardiology ward who'd had to travel 100 miles for a really specialist treatment. She didn't have any family, and all her friends were similarly elderly, and couldn't drive far, let alone a 200 mile round trip to visit her. She confided in me that she was running out of clean night dresses and was embarrassed as she didn't know what to do, so I took them home and washed them for her in my machine. Looking back, I'm sure there was some procedure I should have followed. We are not supposed to get personally involved, but she was so sweet and it was late and all the admin people had gone home. From a patient perspective I still have trouble with this one. I was getting a severe wound on my shin cleaned of debris with a scrub brush. The doctor for some reason wasn't wearing any face protection, and managed to splash wound juice into her mouth. Her response was a pffbtplbbftpbfffft, r i got your juices in my mouth. I was horrified. Never returned. My roommate in dental school was a medical student. There was some big scandal at the hospital he was doing a rotation at, because an anesthesiologist left the, or with a nurse anesthetist, and left the patient alone. Something went wrong and the patient passed away on the table. Where were the two of them? Getting down in a nearby unused room thinking that nothing could happen in just a few minutes. I briefly worked at the front desk clerk for an hour at a local hospital. The rule was the anyone that came in complaining of chest pains had to be back and on a machine within 10 minutes of arrival. Once I entered their name into the system a clock started. So I was told not to enter their name until they had already been taken back to essentially make our numbers look better and make it appear as though they were receiving care within the prescribed 10 minutes. Edit. People complaining of chest pains were typically brought back quickly, just not always within the 10 minute guideline, although generally faster than anyone else. This mostly seemed to be just about producing better stats, although keeping it off the system gave them the ability to delay. There are three kind of lies in the world, lies, damned lies, and statistics. I'm a physician, and used to work 12 hour night shifts at this hospital in California. My co-worker, who was also a doctor and admittedly, a young and good looking fellow, and I covered pages from different floors. If there was nothing going on, I would usually be in my call room reading slash sleeping slash watching TV until a nurse would page me for a problem. My colleagues on call room shared the same wall with mine. One night, I was reading in my room, when I started hearing my colleague and another woman having sex. The noises started getting louder and fairly difficult to ignore, sorry but she was pretty loud. Then, in the middle of this charade, I heard his pager go off several times without him answering it. Eventually, I left the room, and called the hospital operator. I asked her who had paged doctor, my colleague's name, and then called the nurse who was trying to get in touch with him. Turns out, the page was for a patient that was in a serious condition and had to be taken to the IQ. I took care of everything and went back to my room. Later on, I told him that they were paging him for a critically ill patient overhead and that he must have fallen asleep. I didn't say anything about hearing his Allegro Chamber Sex Orchestra. 
but I think he knew that I knew because he got red and thanked me for covering for him. My best friend's mother, Rola, is from Lebanon. When Rola was a young girl she got pretty badly injured and went to the hospital. The doctor then proceeded to tell Rola's mother that she had passed away due to the injuries. She did not believe her and soon discovered Rola locked in a closet, waiting to be presumably be sold into slavery. It was in the news here but there was a surgeon in Birmingham I think who diathermed, essentially burnt, his initials onto patient's livers. My colleague worked with him and saw him do this. I personally haven't seen much that's too bad. There are a lot of pretty dark jokes in the doctor's office but nothing potentially damaging. A nurse did once offer to give me unprescribed flaclexacillin for a skin infection. But I politely refused. Not a doctor, but a cousin of a band that came to a festival with us and proceeded to drink two bottle of whiskey, neat, jump over a campfires with an axe, kick over a pushchair with a baby inside, and fall on top of it and have a blazing row with the mother before passing out halfway into his tent. We were woken up by security asking if we knew him and what time he would be awake so they could kick him out. Following an extended period of guard duty, he was woken and evicted, at which point he decided to drive home to get ready for work as a doctor the next day. As a specialist who sees a lot of referrals, I see incompetence and laziness, which can be just as devastating, much more than outright unethical behavior. Literally less than half an hour before I read this question, my dad, a cardiologist himself, told me of a local cardiologist who tried to hire a hitman on his business rival, had a secret room behind a bookshelf that was filled with illegal weapons, and wrote patients prescriptions so they could get their painkiller fix. Pretty weird that I read this thread right after he told me all this stuff. It's gotta be this guy, Robert Courtney. He diluted cancer chemotherapy drugs for years to make profit. Countless deaths, countless needless treatments. Countless cancer study data rendered useless by one man. I'm a general surgery resident. We had a patient that had been on our service for about a year. Older fellow, very sick. Every now and then, he would go into respiratory distress get intubated or bip up for a bit. Always would bounce back to his baseline of 8 tenths sick. Everyone called him the rock. But not in a cool do you smell what the rock is cooking way. In a boring sick person that sits their way well he had always been a full coat that means that in case of dying we do everything we can to keep him alive after a long time of being inpatient my attending was sick of him and made him a dnr slash i which means let him pass if he starts to struggle he didn't want this but they got away with it saying that he did not have capacity and he was decently with it but i can see that argument so talks with the family started, and they specifically stated that they wanted full code. My attending didn't agree, and decided to call them to confirm. But we think he purposefully called the wrong number many times and eventually decided for himself that he was DNR slash I. Two days later the guy went into resp distress and died. I came to rounds the next morning to two attendings yelling and screaming about the right thing to do. Maybe I feel that it's better that he passed as well. But his slash his family's wishes were ignored and purposefully evaded. I could never go against someone's wishes. Female colleague, cardiologist, grabbed a sedated man's penis while he was undergoing surgery. His penis was massive and she grabbed it to show us. She also measured it. On a related note, her husband was a judge who had to resign due to a sexual harassment issue. Very strange couple. No kids. A lot cats and they drive us a barrow. My grandfather was a physician in a small town and also worked as the pharmacist as this was how it was done in rural areas. He lost his medical license for trading medication for sexual services from patients. He was a brilliant doctor and graduated top of his class from Dalhousie but was a weirdo. When I was younger he was also arrested for smuggling drugs into Canada. Not a doctor but a male nurse at a hospital I worked at was caught sodomizing male patients as they were recovering from surgery this happened when i was a medical student working in the air this 20 something male was drunk driving and crashed his car into an elderly couple causing them to require emergent surgery he was belligerent and walking around naked in the trauma bay nurses were trying to get him to calm down and stay in his room and stop yelling 
He was calling the nurses bitches and asking to go to the bathroom, so they gave him a urinal. As he was urinating, my attending went up to him and said I want you on that bed right now. He said fuck you so my attending knocked the urinal out of his hand. Pies went flying all over the room. He picked him up and threw him on the bed and pushed some rock uranium through his eye to paralyze him. Then he seemed to take his time with intubating him, letting his oats sat get down into the 40s before finally letting him breath again. I don't know what ended up happening to the guy in the long run. Turns out he had just broken up with his girlfriend and went on a drinking binge. He deserved to be punished for what he did, but I don't think he deserved to be forcibly intubated for no reason other than causing a scene. Docs in Pakistan do this, I heard from friend. 1. Do c-section surgery to create higher bill. 2. While fixing bone steal a kidney to sell it off, you don't even know. 3. Do tonsil surgery for no reason. 4. If getting late and some veins getting in the way of surgery then cut it without knowing what is it often resulting in death. 5. Doing surgery without anesthesia because drug is not available hospital admin took money home instead of buying supplies. 6. Abducting newborn and saying died during birth. 7. Giving expired medicines. But 2k USD bill for 4 minute visit still is more outrageous to me here in Mick. Veterinarian. I have worked with clients to hide abuse dogs that were rescued from their me owners until a shelter was located. I wasn't expecting this unethical act to be so well received. Thank you for all your kind words and for the gold. As long as I have a place to put an unwanted pet, I will continue to do what I can. Thank you to you all who have already adopted from a shelter or have taken in a stray. Even if you have paid a lot for your pet, as long as you love it and take good care of it, that's what we should strive for as humans. Really?